Hello, review time again, and uh, today I received my latest KTRT bot. Uh, bought two KTRT bots at the beginning of the month, and uh, what I've got to show you today is a new figure from the latest series of Tobot Athlon. They have now started on season three, and uh, as with seasons one and two, they've got a brand new set of bots, and it's a brand no brand new characters, brand new situation, but. Anyway, a little bit into season three. Obviously, you know, Tobot Athlon is a, a spin-off of the the Tobot series. If 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 you don't already know, and uh, the first series was this this kid who had these these free robots, and uh, they, they they did this thing called robot racing. And uh, I've got uh, I bought one of the figures from that series in the uh, Tobot Beta, so I've got him. And uh, that was the first season. And obviously the last review I did was another figure from the, that series as well, Tobot Athlon Alpha, who I got last, uh, who I reviewed last time. Anyway, so then they did season two, where instead of it being robot racing, it was uh, robot dodgeball, and you had they had the characters from the first season, but they had some uh, uh, a new kid and uh, uh, three new robots that came in. And uh, then that was that. Now season three, it's a totally different kid family sort of unit and three brand new robots and I'm actually really getting into season three actually I will go so far as to say I actually prefer season three to seasons one and two but we've got three brand new robots that have come in and uh, they're uh, Zango who transforms from a, uh, a white Kia Sportage into like a like a like a robotic cowboy then you've got um, Ambulon which transforms from a, a, an orange Jeep into you know into a, a sort of like a a mountain rescue type robot, but he has an intermediate mode. He actually has like a helicopter mode where the the uh, the car mode sort of turns you know, a tail fin comes out and rotors come out the top and it turns into a into a really crude helicopter. But uh, that's that. And the third figure is a guy called Metron. Now Metron, um, when I saw the toys for the uh, latest season, I, I I latched on to Metron straight away because he's a train former. He turns into a train and I, and I I got an interest in trains if you don't already know and uh, train transforming trains are kind of rare and unusual uh, you don't really get that many of them and when you do they're kind of fictitious trains are not very realistic but uh, anyway this guy transforms into a train and, and the the giveaway is kind of his name Metron so I've got him here here he is say hello not carbot Hello to Tobot Athlon Metron. Now, <laughs> as you can see, he turns into a subway train. Now, before we get into the toy, a quick look at the box. He is quite large, it comes in a rather big box. It's obviously got that shiny uh, background on it. And uh, the usual, lots of, uh, lots of flashy artwork, crap on the bottom, stuff on the top. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, it comes with uh, a sheet of instructions which are very easy to follow and you get as with the other Athlon figures you get a number of decals now as you can see there's lots of really small sort of sponsor style decals that you get now some of them uh, go on the train for you know you've got like um, I haven't put any of the decals on this guy he's got like uh, sort of basic stickers like because he's a train he has like a uh, destination blind stickers that go in there and there and there's a, the one that goes in the side and uh, there's, there's some other sort of basic stickers and the rest of them you, you it, it gives you an idea where to put them but you can basically put them anywhere you want and I think well it kind of looks stupid having a train plastered in sponsor decals it would have been better if they'd had like a, a pack of decals that was like graffiti you know and said you know having plastered with graffiti on the side like a New York subway car but anyway so um, I might put some of the stickers on. Uh, I'm not really that that bothered about them to be honest. But anyway, here's his train mode, and as we can see, it's it's quite large. Um, it's a fairly basic looking subway train or, or metro train. Um, now the interesting bit about it, I mean, anybody who knows anything about the anatomy of trains, it's it's got two 
sets of wheels at each end, which would mean that this is a, a single a single unit, but it actually has this bit in the middle, this gap in the middle. Now, that is what's referred to what's called a vestibule, and the vestibule, or the you know the, the, the that is basically a connection between the two carriages. Now, if this was the case, then this should have an extra set of wheels here and an extra set of wheels here. It should have bogies at either end. But they've taken some liberties with the design of this particular train and just giving wheels at uh, either end. And uh, you'll see the reason for this bit in the middle when we get into transformation. But uh, he's a pretty, a pretty good looking train. And like I said, he's, uh, he's quite long, quite heavy, and uh, pegs together really well. Now I will say up front, this guy is a parts former. Now, basically you look at his train mode, one half of him is his top half, one half is his bottom half, and this bit in the middle becomes his accessory. His, I, I don't know if you can call it a weapon, but uh, it's his accessory. So, yeah, the train mode is great. Um, you see, it, uh, it rolls very well. And another thing, um, it's actually got flanges on the wheels. So if it did actually, you did have a, a, a track of the correct gauge, you could stick him on and run him along like a train, even though you wouldn't actually go around bends because the bogies are fixed. So yeah, um, also in the show, Metron, when he, he goes along, he projects a like a hard light railway line in front of him and rides along on it. So he can basically drive anywhere he wants over any kind of surface, which is kind of weird. But then again, if you remember back to uh, the original Robots in Disguise, you had the uh, the bullet train team and they used to do exactly the same. They used to basically, these rails used to appear out of thin air and they used to ride along the rails and down the high street and stuff like that. Or Metron does basically the same thing. Anyway, transformation. Like I said, this guy is a parts former. Um, he's very big, he's very chunky and uh, let's get started. So first thing, you've got to sort of break him in the middle. Now, you've got this center section. So if I take that off, it's just, it's got to, like, elongated pigging ports and then take that off. And then we have the, the vestibule bit in the middle. Now, this is his accessory. And we'll start, we'll just start the transformation with this. So first of all, you've got this round piece in the middle, which is pegged in either side, so you, Gently pull it apart and then you, you pull this apart and then you squeeze them together. Then you unpeg this piece, squeeze that together, and you've got some pegging ports in there and some pegging bits on here. And then you peg them together and then pull that bit out and then do the same on the other side. And there you have his accessory. Uh, and we'll get back to that when we get into robot mode. Now, what should we start with? Um, let's start with the legs. So, this part of the train is his legs. So, if you look underneath, you can just about see them. So, to start the transformation, you uh, unhook the roof, like so, and fold it back. You then take these bits here and fold them round to the side and do the same with the wheels. You then take these bits and turn them round. Then separate the legs. Unclip these panels from the sides of the legs. They are very securely pegged in. And then There's a little red button on the back, which you can depress, and then you pull the leg out. Like so. And then I think you just angle these uh, kneecaps a little bit. And that's his bottom half. Right, now move on to the top half. So, first things first, you get these bits. And this thing does peg together very firmly. And you unpeg those 
and uh, well pull them out to there. We then take this piece and then fold it round and then there's these um, pegging ports here and peg ports there and you've got to push it up that notch there and then click it in. You then take these bits, unpeg and fold them out to the side, bring them down, that will form the arms. Then on the back of the arms, fold these things up. Rotate the arms face forward. Then you bring the legs in. And you've got a big square port in there and a big square bit there. And then you plug in down. And then final piece, bring up his head sculpt. And there we have Metron in his robot mode. And he's a big chunky boy. Look at this guy. Now, in the show, he's um he's like a bodybuilder. He's like a, a really butch hench bodybuilder. And this is his barbell. Now, it does fit in his hand, obviously. Now, so what would be the point of it otherwise? So you can open his his um, hand and then he's got like a slot with a round piece and a flat piece in there. You slot the round bit into his fist, bring it round and then close his fist. And then, then he can uh, hold up his barbell. But we'll take it off for a moment. Now, like I said, he's he's a strong man in the show, and he's bigger than the other t the other towbots, and he is slightly bigger than a regular sized towbot. I mean, this is why I got Beta out because he's a he's a fairly normal sized towbot, and as you can see, he's slightly bigger. And as for a, a more generalized size comparison. Um, I, I was trying to find my Combiner Wars Megatron, which I used to use for my KTRT bots before, but I've lost him in my overflow you know, collection up in the loft. So instead, I dug out G2 Megatron, and then as you can see, he's uh, quite a lot bigger than G2 Megatron. Now, the one thing I will say about this, and, and the, the primary reason why I bought him, because I couldn't really tell from looking at other people's videos or the things in the show was um, he's got bicep swivels. Admittedly, they are part of the transformation. Um, like this guy, the reason I got this guy was because he's got bicep swivels, which is an absolute, you just don't get it on KTRT bots. For some reason, the Koreans, they just don't understand intermediate articulation. They just don't get it. They don't get that, you know, they think robots should have uh, basic articulation like shoulders, elbows, hips and knees, and that's it. In fact, they, they don't even they don't even give them heads. No rotating heads. And uh, this guy, as you can see, his head doesn't rotate either, which is a bit of a disappointment. But he does have his arms that go all the way around like that. Elbows that roughly go to ninety degrees. But then he's got. But it, it, it's like um, ratcheted at 90 degrees. But he does have bicep swivels, which is unusual on a Korean toy. Nothing at the waist, which is a shame, because I, I would have thought, being as it's a square peg, they could have worked in a mushroom joint in there and give him a waist joint, but hey-ho. Now, obviously he's got bicep swivels. He's also got thigh swivels which again is, is unusual for a tow bot. Um, car bots generally have five swivels, but uh, not tow bots, so that's a rarity. Um, knees, they go more or less to 90 degrees. Uh, but his hips are a bit of a disappointment. Now he does have these big thick flaps, which only go up so far. He does have a decent spread. Doesn't quite do the Van Damme, but uh, Still, decent spread, 
They're okay going side to side. I mean, the ratchets aren't the strongest. But then again, this guy is really heavy. Um, but going backwards and forwards, there is limited clearance for, uh, hang on, for the hip in here. So when you move it forwards, it only goes forward one click and then back one click. And then it, it hits the top of the underside of his waist. So you, you just can't, you just can't move it any for any further forwards or back, which is a bit of a shame. They, they, they could have, you know, Cut, done, done a lot of clearance cut out under there and give him a bit more articulation on his legs but again that's that I mean he's, he's quite a clean bot he's got a bit of kibble on the back he's got this little skirt thing and that there and he's these side skirts um, these bits here which are the bits of the roof of the train form heel spurs so he does stand up exceedingly well another little feature he's got He's got the uh, destination blind here, which when you uh, click it, it opens his little slot for his mind core. So obviously being a Tobot Athlon figure, he's got the little the little mind core car and uh, and uh, I think he's got one as well, look. This is the, 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 one of the gimmicks for the uh, the Tobot Athlon line. Now they are interchangeable. They're, it's it's, a, it's a, the same size thing, so I can uh, put Metron's thing in there and vice versa. So they are interchangeable. So yeah, you, you just uh, you just pop it in there, shut it, and jobs a good one. Um, the whole thing with the mine core is that um, this thing has, as you can see, there's a little bubble in the top. Inside there is like a like a glowing ball, which is basically the brain of the robot. And these things can come out of the the bigger robot and just you know drive around autonomously. And uh, in the latest episode that's viewed on the uh, Young Toys uh, YouTube channel. Um, Metron's mind core gets stolen by the bad guy and he gets taken away and uh, this uh, screws up the kid because obviously he's going into competition with the uh, you know the, the other guy the, uh, the you know the enemy competitor I suppose you can call him I don't know what his name is because again Korean names I don't know what his name is but he's, he's a famous um, sportsman in this particular uh, vein of um, uh, robot contest or whatever they do and he, he, he steals Metron and then he takes the ball out of the car and leaves the car behind and then the other guys track it and they find it and he's gone missing and then he, he goes to this this secluded cliff and he throws him off into the sea and he bounces down and gets lodged on a rock and then later on um, his the, the, the dad of the kid manages to find him but the kid's up at the stadium he's only got two out of his three robots and it's an elimination contest where you know his his two first two robots have been eliminated, and he's gonna you know, forfeit the match because he hasn't got a third competitor. And then all of a sudden, Metron turns up, and he just kicks ass. <laughs> he seriously kicks ass. It's a good, it's a brilliant episode. You've got to watch it. Um, yeah, so I'm glad I've got him. He's a, he, he's a very big, very chunky, and uh, you know he's got ratatouille like most um, you know Korean toys have plenty of ratchets yes he has got additional articulation but uh, what young toys give they also take away you know it's um, got very limited uh, hip um, movement which is a shame nothing at the waist nothing at the head so yeah and uh, obviously and then they've got the, uh, the barbell accessory which he, he can hand in either he can have in either hand The only thing I will say is, now, that arm will hold it up. This is heavy and sometimes, you know, the ratchets don't quite hold it. If you put it in the other arm, it does seem to struggle with it. So 
see. You can't hold it up. But you know, you can hold it up like that. And if you turn the, the arm sideways, like that, it will still hold it up. So yeah, he has got, you know, but in the show he's he's basically, you know, he's sort of, you know, he's bench pressing and weight lifting and doing all sorts of stuff like that because he, he's a big, hard sort of bodybuilder type robot and uh, he, he's pretty cool. And the fact he transforms into a train, so that, that was the reason why I wanted to get him. He is slightly more expensive than the other um, Tobot Athlons. He is slightly bigger, he comes in a bigger box. Um, I paid about 65 quid for this guy. Um, you know, usually you can you can pick up the more regular sized Tobots for around about sort of 45, 50 quid, depending on uh, you know, which season they are. I mean, season one bots are getting a bit cheaper now. Uh, season two bots are still uh, starting to come down in price a little bit. But when they're, they're brand new figures that have just come out, they tend to be a little bit more expensive when they appear on eBay. But that's just, just the, the nature of things. So yeah, that has been my look, my review at Young Toys Tobot Athlon Metron from season three of Tobot Athlon. He's great, he's, he's a big, chunky, colorful bot and uh, he has uh, you know, thigh and uh, bicep swivels, which is <laughs> kind of unusual. But uh, yeah, he's a great bot, uh, I'm glad I got him and uh, that's been my review and uh, I will catch you all next time. Ta-da.